Hey Internet, so this is a video that goes along with a new course I'm uh, launching at Sin Studio, Introduction to Cartooning. It's a compliment to making comics. In a lot of ways I think it's kind of the course that a lot of people who come to making comics are really looking for, which is a class where we just draw cartoon characters all through the, the course. Uh, making comics is much more process and writing oriented. So part of studying cartooning is to look at the work of other cartoonists. I am a big advocate of learning through copying. Now obviously using reference material and pretending you didn't or copying another artist's work and pretending it's yours is ethically problematic, but openly copying and uh, to study uh, and pay homage to work is totally legit. You, there's a long training tradition you'll see me do at the end of this video where you just sign the work, your name, after name of the original artist. In the case of this video, I'm going to do a drawing based on the work of the original artist for Barney Google, who is Billy Bidek. Barney Google I'm going to use in the course because he's one of the original Bigfoot cartoon characters. Bigfoot's a, a style from early on in cartooning, basically, like it sounds, they have big feet, also big hands, very non-realistic usually, anywhere from two to maybe four or five heads tall on average for the characters. And a lot of different drawing styles beyond that, uh, the, the really unifying feature is the large feet. It's a fun comical style to work in. It's going at the beginning of the course because it's one of the early ones. There's a, a little stuff that we're going to do before I call noodle arms, which kind of goes back to the Fleischer Brothers and early Disney, and we've seen today in things like uh, Venture Time. Bigfoot, it follows right simultaneous too. Um, one of the differentiating traits between Bigfoot and noodle arm is the fact that Bigfoot characters tend to have elbows and articulated joints, whereas noodle arm characters have kind of rubber arms. They may have a, a bend that's at a particular point that makes sense for an elbow, but it's really just sort of a, a bend rather than an actual joint. Beyond that, these are all kind of arbitrary distinctions just to help kind of think about different approaches to cartooning. So what I'm doing here is penciling a drawing. I've got the picture of a, an old Barney Google cover uh, by Billy Bidek uh, on my phone. You can kind of see it at the edge of the video. And I'm first penciling it out in, in a red pencil, mostly because I, I like working with color erased pencils and I use blue and red and orange usually. Why? Well, one reason is that it allows you to draw over in stages when you need to. And then when you go to ink as well, it's easier to see your ink line on the colored rather than on a pencil line. And then when you scan your art, you don't actually have to worry about it. Color erased pencils can be erased, but you don't actually have to erase them because you can use color replace in Photoshop to basically eliminate them. This is sort of a carryover from an old tradition of working with non-repo photo blue, which used to just not reproduce at all in images. But uh, you can use a color today. Non-repo actually does sort of sometimes reproduce, but you can use colors and use the same idea using color replace in Photoshop. I have a video for that, so check out the link below. And then I'm going to ink this with pen. And Billy probably did this with a, a crow quill, but I'm using a pigment pens. Uh, I think it's a DR Pilot probably. It's my favorite pens, but I also use a couple of other brands. But pigment pens in general are a good pen alternative to crow quills or technical pens. Crow quills are okay, but I'm not a huge fan of them, and although they are kind of a standby of cartooning. And technical pens are just a huge hassle, <laughs> so I, don't, I stay away from those. Pigment pens are awesome uh, because they have a dark pigment, and they tend to be very black and semi-permanent, so you can go over them with other things too, uh, like wash, watercolor, or white paint. And so there's the results. This is uh, my att attempt to kind of copy Billy Bidek. So in the course, what we're going to do is like tackle several different artists' work and study it, look at what traits make it uh, unique to them, and then attempt to emulate it. We go through all the constructive drawing techniques that are used in cartooning and sort of gestural aspects. We look at animation cartooning and comic cartooning and political cartooning. All the different places cartooning shows up. So there you go, uh, cartooning video. I'll try to make a few more of these. Uh, have fun, check out my Patreon. And if you're interested in the class, I'm in Montreal. You can sign up at Sin Studio, at sinstudio.ca. Introduction to cartooning taught by Sal Good Sam. I'll see you around the internet, folks.